My name is Hitty Austin Somerville, and I am the assistant principal at Pinkston Street Elementary in Henderson. I have been at Pinkston Street for 19 years. I have taught fifth grade communication skills and have been in administration for the last two years. My name is Mary Williams, and I am the school guidance counselor at Pinkston Street Elementary School. I have been in education for 28 years. For 20 years, I was a classroom teacher, and for the last eight, I've been a school guidance counselor. Pinkston Street is an inner city school. We have 97% of our students are on free and reduced lunch. Our population is mostly African American, um, single parent households. Most of our kids' parents, the majority of them, um, I would say maybe 40% did not graduate high school. Um, the rest maybe did graduate high school, but, but, but that's it. We've had a, a situation this year that a parent came to us and said, look, my neighbor has a child at home that's seven and they're not at school. So we have to then send our social worker out to investigate and we've actually had to go get kids. Oh, I, I didn't have a way to register them, things like that. So we actually, you know, things, so we do have some students who take advantage of the Smart Start program, the Mort 4 um, program, but not all of our kids come prepared in that manner. At the beginning of school, uh, we take the teachers on a bus tour of the neighborhood and especially our new teachers and so they get to see firsthand um, the neighborhoods that our students come from and a lot of times I've had to go into the neighborhood and I've seen from the community meetings we've had a lot of neighborhood um, problems um, bullying uh, picking on each other fighting um, some of the parents don't get along mm. and so that causes a problem when they come back to school they bring it back to school mm -hmm. and Miss Somerville and I have to try to figure out a way to handle that. According to our testing data we were losing ground with our African-American males. We came to NCAT. The presenter was Dr. Ernest Johnson. He did a seminar on the at-risk African-American male, and we were able to implement some of the strategies and techniques that he talked about. He talked about how, you know, we need to make our school look like the kids that we're serving. We had pictures of um, um, Dr. Seuss reading and, you know, different famous people reading. He suggested that we take pictures of the kids reading and post them around the building like, like we do the posters and of the everyone teachers. else. We were also, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. we, we now have a, what, were a featured teacher wall of fame? with our, fa our, our favorite book. Yeah. So all of the teachers, administrators, custodians had a, uh, a shot taken with their favorite book mm -hmm. and that's posted around the school. So the kids actually see us enjoying reading. Mm -hmm. You know, now they have conversation and dialogue about, you know, things that they're, they're reading on the walls. Oh, look, it's, oh, I read that book that Ms. Williams has in her hand and her picture. So, and sometimes they will go check out the book, you know, that they see on the posters with the kids reading. So it was a wonderful strategy, wonderful. The last seminar that we came to uh, was titled Dr. Martin Luther King, Power of the Dream. Mm -hmm. After a couple days at NCAT, then we um, all went as a team to Atlanta, mm -hmm. and we went to Morehouse College, and we met Dr. Reverend C.T. Vivian, mm -hmm. and I can remember him talking about how important it is for us to find support for these young African males that we teach. And through that, we went back to our school and sort of brainstormed and came up with the Gentleman's Society. Mm -hmm. It was just a group of um, at-risk boys that we started in fifth grade that we knew didn't have any type of parental support. We brought them together. We met every Wednesday, and we basically formed this organization. They were able to write their own bylaws. They elected their officers. They wrote their pledge. And Ms. Williams and I supported um, as the advisors over this committee. We gave them a set of rules and regulations that, well, they came up with some of them. We kind of guided them where we wanted them to be. And if they did not adhere to the goals, uh, the other members of the, the club, of the society, called them on it. They, they would say, you're, you're not um, doing what you're supposed to do. That's not a good example that you're setting. Some of the students who were behavior problems in the, in the beginning, and that's why we targeted 
some of these students. They actually mentored some kindergarten students that they had to go read to. So we really talked to them about the importance of these little kids Setting looking up to them. Setting good examples. Right. On the bus, if you're getting off the bus pushing, that's not a good example that you're setting, and that should make you feel bad as a mentor that you're not guiding these little people. So we really put it on, in, in their conscience. Because a lot of times we find out these kids, they have no conscience about what they're doing. They don't feel bad, no, no remorse. So we really kind of really instill that within them. And then they got the rewards of it, of people respecting them. Teachers coming up and say, look, can I put you down to mentor a student? And um, one student was like, I, I didn't believe so many teachers knew my name. And I, well, mm, you're doing such a great job. Why wouldn't they know who you are? And on Fridays, they would dress up in suits, mm -hmm. ties, shirts, ties, and really be noticed. And, and the rest of the school would look at them. It really helped build the morale of the students. And we had students from lower grade levels saying, I can't wait till I get to fifth grade so I could be in a gentleman society. When we were with Dr. Um, Johnson at NCAT, when we went on the road trip ourselves down to Morehouse College, talking with the gentlemen there, they, you know, they, they found a need in really stressing the fact that we get the kids at a young age interested in thinking about the different colleges. And that's when Ms. Somerville, as a fifth grade teacher at that time, um, had the idea of writing different colleges and um, asking them to, you know, send brochures and different things back to the students. I pulled, just pulled up a list of black, um, historical black colleges and universities online, and each student was assigned a university. And we went through teaching the writing process, you know, you hate the five parts and all of that. What are we going to say? We're going to introduce ourselves, and we're just going to tell them what we want. And the response was just overwhelming. I just did not, I just really thought they would send, you know, just a, a cover letter, you know, something they send. Everybody's will say the same. But for these colleges and universities to take the time to address each student by name, and, and I know they read their letters because they referenced their, their, their personal goals that they put in their letters. It was so overwhelming. I mean, my principal and I just cried one day because I just could not believe the response. So I know that these people in the higher institution are promoting and want us to start preparing students earlier. And sometimes we feel that they don't, but just from this experience, they support me. And what Spellman did actually was very interesting. They sent us a list of things that fifth graders must do to go to college. And I gave a copy to every child, and it was just so amazing. From grades five through seven, you must do this. From seven through nine, you must do this. So the kids were actually held accountable, and they held themselves accountable. And we actually have on our hall, the third, fourth, and fifth grade hall, entering college row uh, uh, up above it. And then when you leave out, it says leaving college row. So they, they're they reminded of that daily, mm -hmm. that they too can follow a dream and, and work towards something. Mm -hmm. I had a call about two months ago from one of my students, guidance counselor at the middle school, and she was having a very bad day, maybe about a week worth of bad days. And the counselor called me, and she was like, "Miss Somerville, this was one of your students, and you teach them that they're going to go to college. And I'm, I was like, oh, yes. May I speak with her on the phone, please? And I just simply just lit into her. This is not how a college student acts. You're going to Miles College. And, and she came back the next semester, report card great. The counselor just called me. We're now in dialogue about the actual program and what we did. Um, and so the kids can, if, 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 if they're just held accountable for it, and they know they have it. people to support them yes, yes. and, um, you know, have the feedback and for them to come back to sort of like their home and know that we will support them. That makes a big difference. And we don't stop supporting their dreams. Even as we, they move on, yes, they have, still come back and they visit. They do. We have a, um, one of my students I had in the fifth grade. He just came back from studying abroad. So he came back and did a presentation to my, for my students. I've had some students who are now classroom teachers. I bring them back to speak to my students. One that's a producer and he's acting all over the world. He just came back um, this year to speak to the students. So I tell them, I can't wait to see what you have to bring back to Miss Somerville, Miss Williams, and Pinkston Street.